Right guys, so if you're interested in a cheap, efficient, relatively easy to build antenna for 17 metres, then this video is probably going to be worth a watch to you. Now, the method that I'm going to talk about in this video, I've actually covered a couple of times before and I'll put links to those videos down in the description. Now, just a little bit of background first. Um, for the last six months or so, I've been running a doublet, 66 foot doublet, and it's been a, it's been better than I can imagine. But uh, the one downfall from it, its main downfall was I cannot get it to match on 17 meters. That's a different story, uh, one for another video. Um, and, I, and I can rectify that, but I'll, I'll explain that in another video. So 17 meters, 18 megahertz. I started to think to myself, how can I get on this band uh, relatively easy, uh, relatively low cost and still have an efficient antenna? So I have a, a 10 meter aluminium mast on the side of my house, it's actually at the, the, the back. So I thought, can I put another wire uh, off that mast, the same mast that my uh, doublet is actually mounted on? So what I've actually created is, now hear me out, an end fed for uh, 17 meters, but it's not the, the traditional end fed half wave where you use a, a ferrite and you wrap it with wire. Um, you know, I've done a lot of videos and that stuff, but that's a multi-band antenna and there is compromises with that. So I only need mono band, one band. So I thought, why would I actually do that? So I would actually be better to use something called an LC match. So uh, inductance and capacitance. And as I said before, I've done this a couple of times before um, with five eighths wave uh, antennas. So I just want to explain the process to you of how I uh, actually did this. Um, and how you can actually go about it too. So, uh, first thing that I that, that you need to do, now you can do this in modeling, but I don't like doing it in modeling, I like to do it for the real. So what I did was, um, I took a length of coax um, and I actually calibrated it, uh, my Rig Expert AA55 zoom. So I calibrated the measuring point um, at the far end of the coax so I could actually get the, a, a mock antenna up in the air. So you basically use a an open, a short, and a 50 ohm load SMA connectors, um, just a little SO239 adapter to, to SMA. So now when you're measuring this antenna and you're seeing the parameters, you're measuring at the far end of your coax, not at the point of the antenna analyzer because the length of coax that you use will give you a bum reading. So that's critical. And it's critical that you ensure you have good coax um, and then you don't have any dodgy connectors because you can get some dodgy readings, which I've been caught out with uh, in the past. So what I did was I, I, I set up my, my 12 meter DX commander pole um, and I had a blank feed point. So it was just a box that was connected to the coax. And I then put that in the up in the air, but, but connected to that was the correct length of wire for 17 meters. So I took um, 300, divided it by 18, uh, what was it, 18, 112, basically the middle of the band on 17 metres. Um, so that gave me a, a full wavelength. I divided that by two, which is half wavelength. And then I multiplied that by 0.95. So the 0.95 is the velocity factor because of what, what I'm using here is just cheap um, 0.75 uh, square millimetre uh, electrical wire, really cheap. You can buy it and, you know, you can buy electrical contractors wherever you want. So that's the wire that I'm using. But it's important that you pre-cut your wire. So you're not actually trimming your wire to tune this antenna. You're going to do it with this little LC match. So I then put that up in the air in its desired configuration. Um, and the wire was actually running down at about 45 degrees-ish. It's perpendicular to, the, uh, to my doublet. I then used my Rig Expert, measured it. I then looked at the all parameters tab and it gave me a, a, a resistance and a reactance. So your, your X and Z or your X and J. Okay, so you get these two parameters. So these two parameters are, are quite, or the fact that these are what you're going to take. Um, and then you're going to put these into a piece of software called uh, SimNEC, formerly called SimSmith. I'll link that down in the description as, as well. So you put... Um, you open up SimNEC, you choose basically, there's something called an auto LC match. So you basically just drag that in into the center um, and then you just put in the figures that you got from the Rig Expert, which is what I did. And then it says, right, if you want to build an LC match, 
you need this much uh, capacitance and this much inductance. Now, I have got from the center core of the, sorry, this, yeah, the center of the coax, I've got a little coil, a little copper coil, which I use with two millimeter diameter wire. That was a little bit big, actually. I had to trim it down just as diameter to get it to go into the SO239 chassis socket. So there's a lot of coil, little coil, coil of wire. I'll put the values on the screen as to what I measured, but it was about three, three point something um, uh, micro Henry's. And then we need a capacitor. So the capacitor uh, goes between the shield of the coax to the, to the antenna point itself. Now, what I use for the capacitor is, and I've used it a few times before, is a RG142 coax. So this is high power coax, um, and it, it, it lends itself to making capacitors. So it's basically just, it, it's not connected at the far end. So it works exactly as a capacitor. I think I needed about 19 picofarads, or there or thereabouts. Um, so with that, I then went about making my LC match inside my little project box. And this little project box was maybe, I think these project boxes are two, three pounds each. And, and between the coax and the little coil of wire, there's maybe one or two pounds in that as well. So really, really cheap. So that was my LC match. And then the next job, I actually then needed to, to put it up on my aluminium mass. So obviously, um, I'm not going to use the, the 12 meter DX, com DX commander pole um, as well as my mast. So took down the, uh, the, the the mass with the doublet on it there and I mounted this box to the pole just below the doublet uh, feed point where it goes from the ladder line uh, into the antenna so just a little bit lower but I was using the same type of box as what I used for the, the doublet and on the back of that I used uh, basically hydraulic uh, pipe tube clamps um, I use these for quite a lot of applications and that just allows me to then attach the box to the mast so that's how I, that's how I got that um, I then needed to get some coax, so a friend very kindly gave me some uh, uh, Messi and Poloni. I believe, now I normally use Ultraflex, but this stuff is extra flex. Um, it's a little bit stiffer than the Ultraflex, but it's nice um, low loss coax, so I've got some lengths of that. So I've run, run a length of that, connected that up, uh, waterproofed it. Um, so then that there's about 10 meters, so then that runs down. Um, my uh, mast okay so once we did that we then put the mast back up and um, tightened everything up so I now we've got this length of 10 meters co 10 meter of coax but what I did it then is I used a GM3 SEK choke because this is a, a half wave and I don't want the, 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 the current coming back down the shield into the shack so I've got a GM3 SEK choke so that the shield of the coax is acting as the counterpoise um, and a choke, so that's the job that it does. Now it does that at my antenna box to which I have outside. Um, I've actually got, there, there's just three antenna connections there so I can remotely change antennas from inside the shack. Um, it's an antenna switch made by Billy, um, a GM60X. It's a really good bit of kit. So the remote switch is actually inside the house and I just bring the three coax lines just inside the house because my shack is right against the wall. It was easier for me to do that rather than just leave it outside and it's not out, it's not out there to uh, uh, the elements. So we dot that up, we, we hooked it all up and there's obviously interaction going on and I kind of expected that. So what it was actually showing was that the wire that was pre-cut, the half wavelength of wire was just slightly too long. So I had a decision to make. I could try and faff about um, with the LC match, with the coil and the capacitor, or do you know I could just cut that couple of inches off the wire because how much difference is it really going to make? So that's what I did. Um, I want this antenna to be up for probably the next six months into next year anyway. I don't want to take it down through the winter. It's up, it's good, I've checked it. So I just cut a little bit of this wire off um, and that just brought the SWR, it was up about two and a bit before. So I just brought it down nice and low and you can, you can see the sweep. So there we have, we have a functioning antenna on 17 meters. Now, looking at efficiencies, um, I don't have the technique to check actually how efficient this is. So using my friend uh, ChatGPT5, so I've got the paid version. So I've done a bit of research with this, some various sources, but looking at how efficient that LC matches, because a lot of people don't use to like to use balance, transformers, anything like that. We're somewhere between 96 and 97% efficient from that LC match 
and I don't think anyone is going to grumble with that. If you can come up with a method for actually checking this, you know, that, that would be great. I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at that. But you're looking anywhere between 0.13 and 0.18 of a decibel. Nobody's going to, if you had zero loss, nobody's ever going to uh, notice that. Um, now, before I made this antenna, I actually modelled it on MMANA and it actually gave me a favourable pattern because it's sloping west. So for me, that's basically covering North and South America. Um, and I was happy with that. I just really missed 17 metres and no, so getting something up was better than getting nothing up. In time, I will fix the doublet because I need to bring ladder line right into the shack, right to the tuner, and I don't do that currently. So how does it actually perform? Well, it's not actually been up for that long, um, but I've had a good few QSOs, and I've had a good few QSOs across the pond, both on SSB and CW. Um, it's got a really low noise floor as well, which is good considering it's a it's an end fed, but really no complaints at all. Now I've used, as I say, I've used this method um, for five eighths wave verticals and they worked superbly. So I had no reason to think that this end fed wouldn't work well with this. Um, as for power handling, um, I've run my Acom 1000 uh, four 500 watts through it. SSB, CW, no problem at all. Again, using chat GPT, it says it should handle that, no problem getting up a bit more than that, maybe full, full, full duty mode cycles, FTA, RITI, it may struggle when it gets a bit above that, but I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to run that, you know, if I'm running digi, digi modes, I'm running 100 watts max, and that's my radio driving the linear, not running 100 watts uh, from my uh, radio itself, so there's not a lot else, I think, to say about that, but it's a cracking antenna, um, in order to measure the component, something that's quite important, I didn't, mention, I didn't mention it earlier, but I've got a Peak Atlas LCR45, and this little meter actually lets me measure inductance and capacitance. Um, I've had it for a few years now, and it served me very, very well. You can do this with a, a Nano VNA. I don't know how you do it, but you can do it with that. So if you've one of those, that's going to be a cheaper option. But I like having this little uh, LCR meter. It makes making... Uh, matching units like this, uh, an absolute doddle. So I'm really going to enjoy this antenna. Let me know your thoughts, guys, um, and what you think. Have you made an antenna like this? Um, I'd really like to hear your your thoughts. doesn't necessarily need to be a half wave. It could be another type of antenna uh, with an LC match. Um, so, that, yeah, that's about it. If you have not subscribed, guys, I would really appreciate it if you did. Um, uh, yeah, it would just be appreciated. Okay, guys, um, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.